Hello everybody, it's Doug here. In this video, I'm going to talk about the evolution of the electronic circuit in Brian May's Red Special Guitar, from the original 1964 build to the current state, which dates from 2018. I covered how to replicate the Jean Reno parallel slide switches in a recent video, and the wiring is relatively straightforward. So in this video, I'll focus primarily on the potentiometers and the treble cut capacitor. I'll finish by showing you the CAT RS Superpot and discuss what you should consider before deciding to fit one to your guitar. Removing the pick guard reveals the folded aluminium frame on which the six switches are mounted and the small aluminium plate on which the two potentiometers and capacitor are mounted. This was screwed to a cuboid section of wood attached to the base of the control cavity. I based the electronics in my Red Special replica on the 2013 specification and we'll discuss that soon. My YouTube videos cover a wide range of topics related to Brian May's musical equipment, and further information on all my projects is available on my website, dsgb.net. Please support my work by liking, commenting, and subscribing here on YouTube, and follow me on social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Let's start by looking at the original 1964 configuration. I've assembled some loose components in the shot here, which I'll use to illustrate the discussion. Traditionally, the Red Special was fitted with two long shaft potentiometers in a circuit with volume control and simple treble cut using a paper in oil capacitor. The capacitor originally fitted to the Red Special was a TCC Metalmite CP33N type paper in oil item with a cylindrical aluminium casing. The nominal value is 22 nanofarad but the tolerances on these vintage capacitors is notoriously large. When Nigel Knight disassembled the electronics for the Red Special book photography in 2013, he measured the capacitance as 30.75 nanofarad at 1 kHz and 33.92 nanofarad at 120 Hz at 20 degrees Celsius. Consider yourself fortunate if you manage to find one that is close to the Red Special's value. As you can see, this particular item is between 30 and 31 nanofarad. The capacitance of the second TCC metal mite capacitor I have here is a bit higher, at over 33 nanofarad. All the others I bought were a long way off tolerance, and I ended up discarding them. Your best bet is to find a modern equivalent, such as this Vichy polyester capacitor. If you want to retain the look of the original Red Special under the hood, as I have done, but prefer to have a reliable modern capacitor, it's worth considering carefully removing the end caps of one of these vintage capacitors, removing the electrolyte, and fitting a Vichy polyester capacitor inside, and then glue the end caps back on. Even with modern capacitors, it is still necessary to buy a quantity and test them to find ones with the desired value. The original potentiometers fitted to the Red Special were 250 kilo ohm long shaft items like the ones I'm showing you here. I bought these two from an internet auction site to use as props in this video, and I've cut the black plastic shafts down to the appropriate size. They have a nominal DC resistance of 220 kilo ohms and are logarithmic or audio taper. Just as with capacitors, it is common for potentiometers to have large tolerances on their nominal values, and 20% is not unreasonable. Ironically, these cheap 220k log pots have actual resistances very close to their nominal value. I've made a separate aluminium mounting plate to show you in this video. The design is as close to the original as I can achieve by observation of photographs and the X-ray images. It has a U-shaped cutout to route the wires, a screw mounting hole, and obviously two 3 8 inch diameter holes to locate the potentiometers. I assume that the sections of hookup wires attached to the capacitor just passed through these small holes, possibly a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch diameter, as I'm showing you here. Before I assemble the components onto the aluminium plate, I'll show you the type of jack socket that Brian originally fitted to the Red Special. It was made by Bulgin, and you sometimes see these branded radio spares. It is a robustly made item with the insulating parts fashioned from Tufnol phenolic resin sheet. The thick gauge steel contacts are attached to the base using rivets. The threaded barrel is fitted with hexagonal washers, which have a domed outer face for an attractive appearance. If you're making an authentic red special, note that you will have to modify these stereo jack sockets by removing the contact lug that's closest to the outside so that it will fit. When the original item eventually failed, it was replaced with a modern switchcraft piece, and the rebate in the blockboard was enlarged to accommodate it. 
Mounting the potentiometers onto the plate is a straightforward matter of inserting them into the holes, threading the mounting nuts on, and then adjusting the position so the contact lugs are facing opposite each other. Since this TCC metal mite capacitor just fits between the two potentiometers, its length is likely what influenced the relative position of the volume and tone controls on the Red Special. The two I've presented here have a plastic sleeve fitted, but the original capacitor doesn't. It was fixed to the plate using two cable ties, which I assume were glued in place. The original long shaft potentiometers have been replaced several times over the years. In 2013, Nigel Knight rewired the Red Special, and he fitted Bourne's PDB-181 GTR series plain shaft guitar potentiometers. These are part of Bourne's professional audio potentiometer range, and are designed to meet the high quality standards required by touring musicians. You can see the assembly in this configuration in both editions of the Red Special book, written by Brian and Simon Bradley. I understand that the original Red Special 250K log pots actually measured 237 kilo ohm. I bought a quantity of these Borns pots, which have a 20% tolerance for my Red Special build, tested them, and matched them up into pairs. Nigel Knight wired up everything for me, and he selected pots with this value. I sold the surplus items to him later, and I retained two sets for spare parts. The pair I'm measuring here were the next closest value, which are matched at 239 kilo ohms, as you can see. If you examine the picture of this assembly in the Red Special book, you can see that Nigel made some further improvements to Brian's original configuration by fitting military specification insulated terminals. Oxley Developments designed this barb cone lock technology, which uses an elastic PTFE sleeve, allowing the silver-plated barbed metal spill to lock itself in place by gently expanding the PTFE underneath the chassis during insertion. Because these Bourne's potentiometers have short, plain shafts, extenders were required. Nigel had custom stainless steel versions made, which attach via two M4 grub screws. I discovered when I originally assembled my Red Special that the tone pot shaft extender doesn't fit under the switch frame, and this is why Nigel had to cut a slot out of the fold on the original piece. After all the effort required to make it, I couldn't bring myself to do this, so I just glued a section of 6mm diameter stainless steel rod to the top of it. Although not actually part of the electronics, let's briefly discuss the aluminium control knobs. The items I'm showing you here are the official versions sold by Brian May Guitars. I prefer these because all the dimensions match Brian's original lathe turned ones, the straight knurl pattern is authentic, and they have a satin finish which looks appropriately aged. These were made to fit splined potentiometer shafts, and therefore required bored out to 6mm diameter to fit Bourne's pots. The bore of Brian's original knobs and these Guyton pieces is a quarter inch or 6.35 millimeters, so the CAT stainless steel potentiometer shaft extenders are designed to fit imperial dimensions. Therefore, you should check the components on your guitar before undertaking any modifications to ensure full compatibility. You can wrap a strip of 0.35 millimeter thick brass sheet around a 6 millimeter diameter pot shaft to adapt metric to imperial. Note that it's good practice to apply self-adhesive felt discs to the underside to ensure smooth movement and prevent your pickguard from being scuffed. Because there are several permutations of imperial and metric potentiometer shaft and control knob board diameters, a good option to extend the potentiometer shafts is a custom 3D printed extender like these ones that I've made. In this case, these have a 6mm bore and a 6mm shaft. The advantage of this DIY approach is that you can design in a threaded hole for the grub screw. I've fitted a metric 3mm diameter stainless steel one to my design, although it isn't really required because the 3D print was very accurate, which resulted in a tight tolerance interference fit. You can see that the BMG control knobs fit well once their splined bores have been drilled out to 6mm diameter. Well that covers the Red Special Electronics from 1964 to 2013. So let's move on to talk about the modifications that occurred in 2018, and the reasons why they were made. In 2018, Nigel Knight fitted what he refers to as the CAT RS Superpot, and he removed the treble cup tone circuit. I made a video in January 2022 covering the CAT RS Superpot, and the CAT Red 18 strap mounted treble booster. 
The RS SuperPot is based on dual ganged linear potentiometers, which are fitted with a 2.2 nanofarad capacitor and a 1 mega ohm resistor to emulate an audio taper but with a shallower curve. The larger pot body requires more space, so it's attached directly to the guitar pickguard. These modifications were appropriate because Brian now primarily uses the Red Special for live performances in large venues where the final output is subject to sophisticated monitoring and control by sound engineers. Vintage analog live setups and studio recording required control over tonal nuances such as the ability to dull the shrill tones that treble boosted trisonic pickups can produce. So the only control he really requires now is changing between pickup configurations and the all-important transition from clean to overdriven tones, which is all done using the volume control. Before implementing this modification yourself, you need to review how you use your Red Special. If your use case is similar to Brian, and you primarily play live, and or have no particular requirement to cut treble, then fitting the CAT RS SuperPot will give you more control over the range that the signal chain transitions from clean to overdriven tones. Recording direct to computer processing software using an interface is popular these days, and a lot of tone shaping and equalization can be done in post-processing. If this computer-based approach is more aligned with how you play and record with your Brian May setup, then there's probably also a sound argument to delete the tone cut circuitry and fit a CAT RS SuperPot. Well that's all for this video. I hope you use the insights into how the electronics inside Brian May's Red Special guitar has evolved over the years to make informed decisions on how you build and modify your guitar.